just got strange, right? Hey folks, let me just adjust this camera because it's moved. It looks about right. How's the audio, folks? Let me know. Happy Friday evening. Here's the tea. Oh, I'm just going to close the door here otherwise it's going to get noisy. our frame rate looking good well that lamp's going to cause me problems hold on let me just um, arrange some stuff a bit here so how's everybody doing uh, hi Laurie uh, audio is good excellent been a bit of a um, hectic day. I've been building. The boards arrived earlier in the week, the new uh, boards. Let me um, go through those first. Um, but I've been building all day today and it hasn't gone completely smoothly. I mean, it's hardware after all. It's... Uh, always a bit tricky so um yes the magic box finally came this week felix decided um that i was worthy of it and decided to take it out of charles de gaulle airport and fedex exchange yeah said it the right way up notice how they've um <laughs> Uh, they've done a, a quick chop and cut, is that what they used to call it, where they join two cars together, two good halves of cars. Well, that's what they've done with their boxes in order to make this fit, which I found rather amusing. It's probably somebody's job to do that. <laughs> so it's actually got two separate flaps, one there. And then another one underneath. <laughs> and lots of goodies inside. So let's have a look at some of the goodies. We can see, we can see what we're going to do um, today. So, uh, first up, let's do the um, The MES board. This is the uh, Black Ice NXT mezzanine board. It goes on top of the Ice Logic bus. Let's see if I can get a decent um, focus on that actually. Come on, you can do it. Maybe not. I need to get a bit closer. 
same board, is it? I don't know that is. Oh, we better. There we go. And you can see it's silver prongs on top and bottom. And that's the F7 in the middle and the connectors. Then um, USB, uh, normal communications, and uh, the um, high power power delivery with the bug in the middle. And then you've got the flash hyper RAM, and then the um, sorry flash hyper flash, and then hyper RAM, and two connectors either side here. Connect to the mezzanine. There's also a SD card at the top here and a Wi-Fi slot at the bottom. I don't have the Wi-Fi, the um, C3 Mini, so I'll have to, we'll have to work on that later. So I've been building one of those up today. Um, here's the populated version that I built today. No, no, no. Let's see if we can get this to um, focus in. It's a bit scruffy, I had to mess with it a bit. Uh, I hate the TQFPs. Again, on the construction I had, so a whole bunch of solder bridges. Um, I've changed the pad size again, I thought that would solve it, but still too much shoulder. So I'm going to have to reduce it again. But this is the populated version. Um, so yeah, the F7 was a pain in the ass. See we've got the P mods on the edge there. Um, what we don't have is obviously, what's up in the top right corner there, we don't have the uh, ESP32 Wi-Fi. We do have the connectors, so we have um, the uh, connector for the um, debug ProVRS for the uh, JTAG SWD connector and the two USBs. All of that's populated and ready to be tested and that's the other side of it. Just the top one. Um, put my forward back. And pack everything together. Um, the other thing that we got here next um, this is the uh, nice um, logic bus with the ICE uh, HX4 four in the centre uh, a load of series resistors for all the I.O. pins reduce the ringing etc do some impedance matching and then on this side we have the power supply section which is two switch modes which take the 5 volts down to 3 volt 3 and 1 volt 2 not that much else on there really. Um, a few resistors and things for the PLL and caps decoupling. And then on the back, oh, I've also put the tributes on there. I don't know if you can read those tributes. Spot your name. Uh, 
And then on the back, we've got all our got a bunch of decoupling uh, caps, obviously, in the centre underneath the BGA. Come on, focus. There we go. And then the um, four tile connectors to support four tiles. Not much on the back there. I had quite a few problems making this. I thought I'd have difficulty with the other board, and I did with bridges, with the TQFPs, etc. But this was the one that really caused me grief. Everything on this side came out good. It came out coming up roses. Everyone on this side went completely wrong because it's double sided when you make it. You have to do it in the oven all at once. Um, and I stupidly put the connectors on the back and first pass in the oven. Sorry, on one pass rather than doing it in two. And of course, the connectors, because it was face down like that, they just fell off. Well, three of them fell off, one of them didn't and was at 45 degrees, hanging on by half the pins, which was a nightmare to, resume, to remove. Absolute nightmare, absolutement. So that's a manufacturing problem I'm gonna to have to deal with. I haven't quite worked out what the trick's gonna be with that. I mean, I knew about it a long time ago when I first, because I avoided putting those on double sides to start with, to avoid this kind of problem. You do get manufacturing problems with that. Um, I can't show you the other side because I've got some tiles on it already. But this is the one that's already made up. I've got the double tile at the bottom. I'm still unsure whether I want to go ahead with this. But I've got some made anyhow. Um, yeah, I know it doesn't look like double, double tile. It looks like two tiles but because it's got the uh, markings down there. If you look, it's actually one tile. And then the other tile I've got here is, uh, I made up a seven segment tile. And then this, this position's empty. In fact, this connector's still very wonky. I had to remove a couple of these connectors and try and fit them by hand manually. They're really tricky. You've got to get the positioning spot on. Um, so that's going to be fun. And then if I turn it round, you can see it all populated. I know it's upside down, but that's the way I've got the... Uh, you can see the double tile stuff at the bottom through the apertures. And then if you look closely, you can see what's going on with the display tile poking through. And it's absolutely flush. It's unbelievable. That's just jammy luck. I mean, I tried to make sure there was enough size for it to go through but yeah it's it's actually flush now I do have problems with the spacers what I really need is seven mil spacers and unfortunately they sent me a bag with seven mil spacers or it says seven mil on the side but they're actually six mil so I've still only got six mil and I also got some eight mils but they're too big so it has to be the seven mil but I don't have the seven mils, but these will do. I mean, it's not quite right, the angles. So that's the a kind of semi-populated tiles with the uh, um, nice logic bus. And then um, this fits on, on the top. And I've got to remember which way around it goes now, so I want to get it right. So that. Hold on. Definitely need to get this right. Just remember which way around it goes.
double check here, make sure I've got it round the right way. Definitely goes over that side. Pretty sure it goes that way round. The lighting in here is not as good. I'm going to have to change those light bulbs again soon. Right, so when you fit it all together, there you get your Nun Oreo sandwich because we don't have a white center. <laughs> USB on one side, look, and debug, etc. And then P mods on the other side, Can you see here, we've got a mix mod and then double P mod yeah and you can also see hold it that way up you can see the display so this here is the back of the um, black ice mezzanine NXT how cool is that? It's a chunky sandwich. Mmm. Somebody's already taking a bite, look. Right. So these are the bits I have. All made up and connected together now. Right, time for a sip of tea. So we'll power it in a second. I've done a basic test and um, the, uh, the input impedance on the power rails all looks good, etc. Um, one thing I was actually forgetting about is how slightly awkward it is to test the bring up of the board because because of the uh, kind of opaque sandwich you can't actually get hold of get to any of the components directly when it's all connected up like this the testing is not a problem because you can just run the algorithms and have test tiles and that kind of thing but for debugging things that may be wrong, it may prove a bit more tricky. But uh, we will power that up in a second. But I'm just having a bit of tea. I mean, I've had very little break today. I've been going since this morning, trying to assemble these things, then dealing with the problem with the um, tile connectors falling off among other things been a bit fiddly but it looks okay I mean the next thing we'll probably do we we'll do a power test first uh, and see if um, see if the power is going through do some power measurements that kind of stuff um, and if all of that's okay, the next step will be maybe trying to connect the debug connector to see if we can talk to the SDM32. However, we might have a bit of an issue. Um, uh, one of the things we need to work through will be the new um, the new board file. And uh, pins, which we'll have to go through. 
before we um, try and program it because otherwise I may inadvertently um, do something I don't ought to because I'm pretty sure some of the pins are different from uh, the previous prototype which is currently plugged in down here uh, this one I was currently running that test yesterday um, last stream it's a bit cramped over here because I've got the lamp on there I'll change that round in a bit so we can see what we're doing um, so what has everyone else been up to this week anything interesting Laurie have you been playing with your uh, you, your new Euralex that you got from go around did you get any further with it? I presume you did. I saw you, what were you using the, was it Wave, what's it called? What was the daughter board that you were using? Carrier board, Pi carrier board, Wave something, Wave share, was it? Wave share I know, yeah, that's it. Right, shall we power it up, folks? Let's do it, man. Ready? Prepare for the... No, no, don't prepare for the smoke. Because <laughs> we don't want to do smoke. Uh, let me make sure I connect in the right... Um, Laurie says uh, working on a game menu as an alternative to OSD for the GPI case and getting NES working on it. Are you working with the game case again now? Game menu as an alternative to OSD. Right, let's power it up and see. Well, no smoke, that's good. Oh, and you're porting the others. I saw that you got the, um, was it the Acorn working? Or the Atom, rather. Well, this is good. Um, I'm going to need a longer cable though, otherwise I won't be able to show you. Hold on. I'm just using my um, USB uh, power delivery box to power this up. So I'll just see how much current it's taking, which is very little by the way. I've got a bigger, longer cable here. That should work very much. Let's try it. This is very, very long. I'm not going to plug this directly in the computer, obviously. At this point, that would be unwise until I've tested it. I'm just using my USB PD unit. And That's good. So, if we look inside of the USB cable, can you see that? I don't know if you can see the individual LEDs. You can kind of see an orange glow just above the USB right angle connector. 
and get a better focus on that. That red, that orangey colour is coming from the uh, IceLogic board, sorry, the IceLogic bus. And the other side of the uh, debug connector, can you see it's green? No. Thank you. Green, reflecting on the USB. That's the LED for the, that, they're both RGB LEDs. That's the LED, I'm trying to get it to focus. Um, yeah, the Black Ice board, the next board, Black Ice Next, has a, is, the RGB LED is reflecting off the, uh, second USB connector which is empty there and you can see it's green that is all good so what that's telling us is uh, by default the RGB LED on the black ice uh, NXT the green LED is connected to ground so that automatically comes on and power up the other LEDs don't one of them is connected to one of the pins of the ESP32 which is obviously not going to turn on because we haven't sold one of those on, because we don't have one of those yet. One of the mini C3 modules. Um, and the other LED is on the Black Ice NXT board is connected to the um, STM32, which we haven't programmed. So again, that's why that's not on. So the green LED being on is exactly what we should expect, and that's good news. The orange colour coming from the, I'm just feeling making sure it doesn't warm up as well. The orange colour coming from the FPGA RGB LED indicates that both the red and green LEDs are on and that the blue LED is off. Um, the blue LED, I will have to remember what I've connected it to. Uh, interrupt which is also connected to the STM32 and the FPGA. Um, and we're not driving that, so that's not on. The red part of the RGB LED is, as usual, connected to the done uh, signal. And that's being pulled down now, which means it's not programmed, uh, which is what we'd expect. And the green LED, again, is connected to ground. Um, so that should come on when the power comes on. So the colours that we're getting are good. That also means that uh, the 5 volt is being converted down to 3 volt free because the 3 volt free is driving the LEDs on both boards. So we've got 3 volt free on both boards, which is good. So I'm just going to do some measurements now um, on the voltages. What I can do is um, check the three volt free. So I can do that on one of the um, P mods. Probably the easiest thing to do it on. In fact, they won't tell me what I need to know, thinking about it. Let me check. Mm, the Black Ice P mod. Mm. 
Yeah, it looks high to me. Interesting. Now would that be higher voltage? Yeah, three point three well it's three point two nine and ground. But some of the other pins look a bit random. Some of the pins have seemed to be getting 3.5. Um, that must mean that power is bleeding through the IO section somehow. I wonder if there's a short to a slightly higher voltage. I mean, they're not being driven. You've got protection diodes on the IOs for the B mods, um, which is going to put those at a slightly higher voltage if it's coming back through the um, those diodes, perhaps. Yes, yeah, a little bit random, but I mean I don't know what those should be anyhow because we've not programmed it or anything at this point but the 3 volt 3 looks good um, I don't have any way of testing the 1.2 volts on here I might just be able to get to the um, underside of the board to test the uh, BCC voltage. Hold on. Let's use the uh, better magnification. Yeah, so what are you going on with that? Let me just use one point two. That's the VCC voltage, which is cool. For the FPGA, so that's where it should be. I'm getting some weirdness on the ground, so. I think it's just some capacitance and stuff. Not sure how good the tiles are connecting, I'll have to check that. But voltages look good. We don't have any real heat, so it's all a nice sign. You can kind of see the orange and the, and the uh, green in there. Look at it from this angle. I should focus, it's really annoying. There you go. See it reflecting around in there. I may have to slightly change some of the positions of these LEDs. I think that's too far back. I mean, it reflects nicely on the USB, but it could come this way a little more. And I definitely want to move the black ice one to the other side of the USB. 
it was because I was thinking of using um, instead of the shrouded debug header as you can see there which blocks the LED I was just going to use um, right angled pins I'm still considering that but this is kind of neat assuming that the cable fits ok that's good voltage wise everything seems to be hunky dory which we like I didn't show you what there is that, that, that other tile looks like. Um, this double tile, the one that I'm umming and ahhing about maybe including. Goran has Litex Linux working. Oh, that's cool. Is that with the SRAM version? Or has he got a DRAM version working with that DDR3? Um, so this is the kind of, um, this is a double proto slash P mod. So it does both. Um, so you can use it for, as a, as a proto board. That's what the holes are for. And these are normally face down when the tile connects. But at the bottom here, you see, Um, P mods. That's a mix mod, and over here is a P mod, and then there's two connectors here which are like logic analyzer connectors, which are just right angled males, um, and they are a combination of ground and signal for eight signals, which will make it easy to connect into the logic analyzer. So that's what I've got on the bottom at the moment. But I haven't populated the excuse me through hole parts, and I'm still debating whether to do a double tile or not. It's kind of neat, good for prototyping and stuff. So I've got one of those on at the moment. That's sitting on the back. There you can see the back of it. Still no smoke. That's good. Yeah, that's the back. The front or the upper and lower, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, Laurie says, I think he has both the DDR3 and SDRAM, SDRAM version. Is there enough SDRAM to do Linux? Then? How big is the SDRAM? Is it huge? Hello, Twinkle, you come back in. You want to say hello to folks? This cat is injured poor. Oh, very poorly in the week, weren't you? We don't know how you've done it. Oh, oh injured poor. But you're a bit better now, aren't you? A bit happier. We're hoping that you don't have to go to the vets for it because we know how much they charge. Don't we, Twinkle? Hmm? Yes. Right, you want to go through? Uh, my board has 64 megabytes of uh, SRAM. Oh, it's SDRAM. Sorry, I thought you said SRAM. My mistake, Laurie. I was going to say that. It's an awful lot of SRAM. Yowza. Right. So we know it's powering up, so I'm going to unplug it now. Uh, I can probably use this cable temporarily. Um, 
looks all good so far. Next test will be one plugging the bug header in. Hope I've got it around the right way this time. But before we do that, we need to um, go through the uh, pinouts. So let's do that. USB cable has too many cables in it. It's packed. Most of them are old and redundant. Right. Um, let me put this back. All right, I should quickly, before we do that, I should quickly show you what other tiles I've got. I've got other tiles here that I haven't yet populated. Well, I've got one which is the um, certain segment, which I've already shown you, which is this one. Ta da! Is it weird how this focus works? I can't quite because it tries to focus on what's behind. So that's a seven segment tile. Um, then I've got a few others which I haven't put together yet, which I'll look at over subsequent coming weeks. That's a HDMI tile. Or DV, um, what do I call it? DAVI tile, digital audio and video tile. Um, has a electronic digital video connector on it, much like a HDMI, full size, and then two uh, 3.5 jacks. So we can do I2C and all sorts of over, over that, as requested. Uh, and the other thing I ordered was the... Was a seven segment tile and the ah, VGA tile. Okay. Let's look at the VGA tile. Pretty straightforward. Um, I need to construct that one as well. And then finally, one more tile that I've got is a motor tile, which is slightly different from the last time. And I may well change this again yet because of the connectors. I'm not 100% happy with. Focus. There we go. The uh, motor tile, and that can do um, free free motors, brushed motors, and encoders. And I've got to populate that as well. So I'm not going to be short of stuff to do. Okay, right, let's have a look. Right, let's look at the IOs on Black Crab first. 
Um, right, what do I need to do? I need to quit what's running. I'm on the probe RS branch at the moment. Let's just check. Okay. Um, well, so where to start? Um, what would need to change? Um, let's go through. I need to open. The um, keycard file for this. Let's look at. Right, I've got the. Um, Ice logic bus file open. Let me switch to black ice. Let's have a look at the schematic here. We need to check a few things. So, um, do I have that turned on? This is a schematic. Um, so the things we need to check right first. Let's have a look at programming. One minute. Let's look at the programming pins. So that's PB12, 13, 14, and 15. No. Get myself confused. Hold on. That is not correct. Programming pins. Okay, yeah, so there's quite a big change here. Oh, well, this is going to be fun. Um, so one of the big differences between this and the previous prototypes is we've changed the pin out of a few things. So before I think we had separate IOs. Yes, let me just switch back. So that you can see. So if we look at the um, pin definitions here for Black Crab. So Black Crab is the firmware that we need to program into the SGM32. But we need to change it first. So um, if we want to be able to program the um, FPGA, we, we have to talk SPI to the uh, SPI pins on the FPGA in order to program it because it's an ICE 40. So um, what we had here is we had these pins. We had a SCK serial clock that connects to the serial clock in on the FPGA for the SPIO. Then we had a master out from the STM32 to the uh, 
master in SPI, sorry, slave in of the SPI, because um, we're putting it in slave mode on the FPGA. We had a chip select effectively, which is SS, um, that we're controlling. Um, don't worry about these two for the moment. They're not involved with programming the FPGA. Those are the three important ones. Okay. We, we don't need MISO. That's just returning data that we're sending when we're programming it. So those are the three key ones. Now, those were separate on that prototype board. The connections between that and the FPGA for programming it were separate. Now, what's different this time is those pins are now common to the quad SPI. So there's a quad SPI connection to the uh, FPGA. So this is going to be tricky. It's not going to be straightforward. Um, so we have six pins connected to the FPGA quad SPI. Seven in fact because we've got an event pin as well. But three of those are connected to the SPI pins for programming uh, the FPGA. Now, with Quad SPI, you can send out uh, an SPI signal um, as a Serial mode. You don't have to use four bit. You don't have to use nibbles. You can actually send one bit. So we will use quad SPI or our quad SPI peripheral to talk SPI to the FPGA. Okay. So that that's a big change in the pinout. Um. So our way forward from here in order to check that would be either disable the quad SPI peripheral entirely and bit bang the signal just using the free IO pins as we've done in the previous version. That's one way. Um, probably a sensible way because we know it works. Um, and then later do the quad SPI in serial SPI mode and try doing that. Um, so that's one of the things that needs to change. What else has changed on here? The reset pin. So reset on here is GPIOD PD11. PD11. Right, let's switch back to KeyCAD. See what we're using for the reset pin now because it's probably different. Yes, we're using, if you look at the top here, our reset pin is PB4 now. I'm presuming that's the signal we send out. Hold on. Reset. Yep. So that's the same. Uh, sorry, that's different. So I'm going to make a note here. I'm going to start a new section in here.
So Port Black Crab to New um, Ice Logic Bus slash Black Ice NXT. So I'll keep all those things that we haven't done there because that's useful. So one of the things that we have to do here is obviously um, Uh, what was the first one I had there was uh, convert let's do the individual ones first uh, change sorry change uh, reset pin from uh, what was that PB10 wasn't it PB Sorry. P D ten to um what did we say P B four? Yeah, PV4. Two. PV4. And next. Uh, try new. Um, spy pins, which are, oops, SPI as bitbang and those are what have we got uh, SCK is PB2 And then we want uh, QD0 and QD, is it QD0? I think it's QD0. QD0 and that is PD11. Select is uh, where is select? Q 
QSS which is PD6 So add in here We don't need that one anymore. Sorry, you couldn't see that, folks. I just deleted, there was already a port um, SPI to hardware peripheral, but uh, we're actually going to use a QSPI peripheral. Okay. Okay, so it's that one. Um, what else did we have to change? Uh, done pin. So done pin on the new thing is P6. Is this one? No. PC13. Um, PC13. that one So if we're driving the red LED, in this case, is on the uh, back ice board mode is P5. That's different as well. I'll check in a sec. Um, is it again? P five. That's also driving the LED. So we could actually try changing that, make sure that works as well. For the ESP32, don't need to worry about that yet. DRS. Can't remember. 
Um, enable, we don't need to deal with it yet. We don't need a, to deal with the U heart at the moment. The U heart. Um, let's just save that. Let's just go back to uh, main RS. Quad SBI pins will be the same, obviously. Um, the um, master clock out is the same pin, I think. Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, master clock out is on PA8. So, yep, we're good on that. USB is EFS, which is 11 and 12. Let's just double check that. I'm pretty sure that those are the same. Uh, 11 and 12. Don't need to change any of that. Um, status LED. That's that's basically our mode LED. Oh no! In fact, there was two LEDs. Hmm. So we don't have a status LED anymore. That's just got to go. So let's just make a note of that. I can't remember what we were doing with that. It was surplus to requirement. Don't need that. Let's go back to top. I think we've covered all of our um, basic pins, haven't we? Uh, road LED. That one's going to change from PP7. Uh, GPO SCK. That's going to be part of Quad SPI. Mozzie is part. And SS is part of Quad SPI. WP hold and WP and hold we will use because there is another connection we have a separate connection now on the STM32 to the flash or an SPI port here that goes to that SISO, SCK, SS um, we don't have we don't need to use the WP and hold. The only the only reason we were using WP and hold before was because the SPI was also connected to the FPGA, so we had to disable the flash um, when we were talking to the um, ICE 40 and vice versa. But because it's now on a separate SPI port on the STM32, we don't need to worry about WP and hold, I'm pretty sure, which is why not finding any reference to those here. So um, we can remove those as well. Let's add that. Oh.
Okay, um, any other changes that we need to cover on here? Top from the top again, right, so mode LED we're going to keep, but change, status LED is going. What are these other things I have here? I do need an interrupt pin. Okay, so um, what I need to do here is replace pattern with interrupt now on um, interrupt should go to the mezzanine we've got H interrupt and interrupt 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 is PD three. See, we did have a button, we don't have a, a button anymore, not a user button. Well, actually, we have a mode button. Oh, hold on. Let me just double check here. We've got a DFU button. We've got the boot button. Now the boot button is connected to P4. Okay.
button is now now boot DFU button on pin P3. Uh, new interrupt button on PD3. Okay. Um, we did have an interrupt, or well, we did play briefly of an interrupt um, using the button, I think. That was a long time ago. Here. You can do a task for the interrupt. It's actually mode button, isn't it? That was PB4. E3. Okay. Um, any other changes? So that was just. Um, we'll use the interrupt for that. Um, okay. Uh, SCK recovered, Mozzie, SS, just recovered, these two go, these are quad SPI pins, reset we've covered, rest of the quad SPI pins, what was in here? Those are redundant. Um, QSPI driver, blah blah blah, none of this changes, we lose that stuff. Um, master clock out to the FPGA doesn't change, it's the same pin, USB pins are the same, so the rest of this is good and we can try the soft SPI for doing the programming using those other pins shortly, although I have a naming problem with those because we now have separate SPI pins. Um, have I put that So, um, sorry, it's a bit boring, folks, but must be done. Add new spy pins for STM flash, which are um, PB12 to 12, 13, 14, 15. Which is SS SCK. SS, SCK, SO, SI. Those should connect to the flash. Yeah, and WP and hold are automatically tied up. We don't need to control those separately now. 
Marvellous. Great, 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 great. Um, is there anything we need to add? I don't remember what DRS is, hold on. Something reset. Oh, it's for resetting the um, flash RAM. No. That's using the regular reset signal. Uh, hint, hint. Where the hell does DRS go? So. I've forgotten what I've done. What was that for? I can't remember what I used that for. That's very strange. Oh. Oh. Uh, no, I didn't use it for the card. Damn if I can remember what I've done with that. Right, I'll have to come back to that. Interesting. Oh, I know, it's for the LCD DRS. Display reset. Oh! And I haven't put any of those pins into black crap yet. I don't even know if they will go into black crap per se. Oh, I'm out of tea. Onto the water, folks. How are we going for time? <laughs> okay. The other stuff goes down to tiles. GP2. TX and RX I will do something with but we don't have support for that yet I squared C goes down to tile and also one of these goes to the power delivery controller but that's the second I squared C channel this one um, boot we've already covered backlight that's a backlight control but again that's the display we're not touching any of that today enable goes down to the tiles SWL goes out for debugging DCS goes to the display GP1 goes down to a tile DWEO DWE and DOE are right and output enable signals which go to the display interrupt we've covered SCD um, which we haven't put support for yet. I think that's connected to the um, maybe it's not connected to that. SCD. What is that connected to then? No. Um, 
we've also got the card support in here which we're not using and the display data etc etc and the extra you want SWDIO we don't need to worry about any of those um, the mix signals go down to the tiles and hold on that's oh the second um i squared c channel so yeah i think i don't there's i don't think there's anything that's going to get us in trouble here if we don't do anything with it okay cool so these are the changes we need to make for black crap Be next. Mm, that looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Black eyes NXT. Okay, so those ones. So what do I do? Do I create a new branch for this? Mm. If I do that, will it take those changes across? What do I call this branch? Do I call it something different? Um, really, I should have merged this with... This should become the current Pro Bar S. But, do I need to rename this or tag this or something? Depends where I need to go back to that. Oh, I just got to my soldering iron still on. Right. Um, should have thought about this beforehand I should have merged the other one into something else I don't want to stash it because I forget about it um, what's the best way hmm. let me have a quick think and whilst I'm doing that Excuse me, I haven't had any supper tonight. Right. I think... Oh! Thanks, I. I don't know why it's not showing. I accidentally disabled it. No. What? What? That's very strange. I don't know why it suddenly um, disappeared. I think, hold on, you just check something.
Um, there is a shortcut to do this remotely, isn't there? I think it's git checkout, isn't it? Git checkout minus B for branch. Weird. Just put it like that. Is that how you do it? So if I do git checkout minus b b i n x t, it's the same as creating a new branch and then pushing it, isn't it? God, I forget. Hold on. Hold on, let me just double check. I don't want to do this wrong. sure it does this yeah okay Just um, do the to do changes. Um, Um, okay, is that a bit small actually? Sorry, I've just suddenly realised how small that is. Well, it's a bit bigger. Maybe you can read it now. Um, so, I need to do those changes. So, 
let's change the reset pin from PD10 to PD4. <sighs> PB4. 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 I need to put that in a section. Where do I do? B. P, 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 B. In fact, it should be my, anyhow, because I'm going to change the status of that. I know I don't. But. P, four, yeah. That's changed. Also, whilst I'm here, so that's done. Um, the other thing I needed to do was, uh, damn it, I always do that. So annoying. Uh, well, it doesn't need to be big. It's just a little one. I was also going to get rid of the. Um, Status LED. Because I'm like, that is done as well because it's in the same place. Bye bye. Mode LED. Whilst I'm here, let's change that. What, what does that change to? Mode LED. It goes to P3. P3. Let's change that. P3. So let's take that out. down here P3 whilst I'm here let's kill those because we don't need those And I moved that to P five, right?
That should be P5. Oops, confusing myself now. Okay. Dump into PC thirteen. Dump into PC thirteen. Where's my dump pin? Here we go. PC thirteen. I have two here. It's odd. Don't quite know what that's doing there. I think I was doing something with that before. Um, do I have a PC? P E D. I need to organise these a bit better actually. PC. Converted over mode button, mode button is now P thirteen. And that needs to yeah. And I also need to add the interrupt, don't I? Interrupt PD three. PD three. Um, what did I say? PD3. 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 Of 
Now let's keep that here for a sec. Interrupt. And then make that unused to start with. Forgotten the planning number PD three PD three. I'm not using this yet, so maybe that should be pull up rather than floating. Internal pull up. Can I do internal pull up? Does it work on that? That's a good point. Down isn't push pull out, but that's input. Can you do a into damn it? Showing me that I'll leave it like that for the moment. I don't know what that shit's there for. Let's get rid of that. It's very confusing. Okay. So we've got the interrupt in now. Add new pins for SPI. So I will need um, uh, push put out, put out, I guess, something like this. So uh, the first pin I shall call. Um, I'm just going to put these unused at the moment. Select. 
D12. Um, this will be FCK flash clock. PB thirteen. Oh. Next one will be PB fourteen, and that will be the serial out. F S O and F S I fifteen. Um zero it out. Oh, what am I using caps? It's an input. Input, I think we want, don't we? So comes out here and goes in here. Zero in, zero out. These might need to be the other way around. So these are from the res with respect to. Master in, serial out, master out, serial in. So these are actually the other way around. I think. If I'm not mistaken. Confusingly, uh, Lori says Goran has his GPI two case now and is reverse engineering it and hopefully producing a schematic. I think he's also planning to contact them to see if they want to collaborate on an FPGA version. Yeah, it's a good idea, really good idea. I don't know, are they um, European or UK or? Or are they Asian manufacturer or something? Do you know, Laurie? So I remember why these are around this way. I think Retroflag, a Chinese Asian manufacturer. Hmm. I see. that done. So that's all the pin changes. The only thing we need to do is perhaps try and um, do something. 
I wonder if we should just try Blinky before we try programming the FPGA. That might be a good idea. Plus the USB and everything else that has to be done. To do Blinky, we would need What I can do is just change the mode pin. I think I had something like that. Status LED set low. We don't need that anymore. Mode LED set low. So that will actually change it. We don't need any of that status stuff. It's dead now. This was making it flash. I could leave that in there. Do I need that? We can make the mode LED flash if we want. Set mode amber LED off, set low. mode um, mode connects to the red LED set mode amber that's red LED Probably it's going to be the same as the other one. It's not going to be very noticeable. Should we try flashing it? Why not? Be interesting. Um, Going to disconnect the um, current one. And all the logic, etc. Okay, I need to connect this one up next. That powers up, okay. I can get the USB and the debug connector in.
Right, we can see it plugged in now. Can't really see the colours though. Uh, unless. See a bit of a reflection of that there. Anyhow, let's try compiling it because it's probably going to complain bitterly. I will have made a crap load of mistakes. Guaranteed. Okay. Warning, unnecessary, unsafe plot. Yeah, I don't need to worry about that. Compiling that expected one off. Down mode, 261. 261. Cannot find WP in the scope. So I'm setting WP, am I? Two two three. trouble with these pins, aren't I? I need to disable the quad SPIs. Shit. Um, yeah, this isn't going to work because it's going to cause a problem. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Let me just see if I can solve a few more problems though. Mismatch type. Victor D found B. I've typed these thinks that that's PD10 but it's not reset is now
Mouse. Coming through. You don't finish your supper. I would have been better off refactoring these. Damn it! Didn't think. Okay, all of that's going to change. Just go through these one by one. Unused import PD10. Okay. Just going through it slowly but surely. Why doesn't it need to be mutable? <laughs> Surely it needs to be mutable if I'm using it. That's strange. What you doing, Twink? You want to go out? Oh, crikey, it was complaining. Come on, then, just play. What are you doing? Come on, then. That actually compiled and tried to talk to the JTAG. Interestingly, JTAG cannot find a connected device. Check that the debugger is connected to the chip. If so, try using program with option connect under reset. Or if using cargo. Um, probe run, okay, so reset. If I can run that, I can't remember which way around I'm running it.
Oh, I've done something here that I probably didn't need to do. I hope I haven't permanently changed the configuration by doing that. I should have just used Probron. That hasn't permanently changed anything. Um, hmm. Let me just check some things here. Shit. I just want it to talk to the chip. I don't want it to actually run anything. I want it to just have a conversation. 
but I think I might have an, a hardware issue here. JTAC cannot find a connected device. I can't possibly have got it round the wrong way again, surely. That would be bad to do that twice in a row. Um, Laurie says, Are you using the ST Link version 3 for programming the STM52? Yes. <laughs> Mine is currently unopened in its box. Well, I'll get you a board if I can get this working. <laughs> if it checks out. Um, I assumed I fixed it last time. This may be assumptions a bad thing. But that's not helpful. I won't have to modify this again. Damn it, that's a low level mistake if it is. I'm fairly sure I changed this shit. <laughs> Then I didn't expect to get stuck at this point. It's a bit annoying. What I did on the last board, if I remember, is I had the connector reversed in some way. Um, oh, dearie, dearie, dearie. It's not in this document, is it? <sighs> Very annoying. Oh, well, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm just looking at the manual. Oh, it's really slow. Come on. 
No, 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 no. Why does it keep doing that? Use the manual. ST link, JTAG, virtual functions, board connectors. God, which connector is it? This is really confusing. It's not 14, is it? It's 10. Sorry, I'm just looking at the manual for the um, ST link. Here we go. Well, it's a 20 pin connector, that's not right. 14. BCC SWDIO five ground SWD clock ground SWO Two pins we don't use. Then ground detect and SRST. So that's, I think it's like a 14 pin connector that goes to 10 pin connector. So that looks right. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. Mm. It's very confusing, Laurie, as to which connector. I think I'm using the STDC 14 to 10 pin. Uh, which is a 14 pin connector underneath but it ignores the first two and the last two leaving just a 10 in the middle so when it converts to that it converts to those um, Let me show you the manual. What's this called? Uh, link. It's 
So that's what I'm looking at now is that connector. It's actually underneath the um, uh, the ST link without the add-on board. There's a 14 pin small 1.27 pitch connector and there are I think three different cables you can have that go to different size connectors. So I'm using the 14 to 10 pin but um, that is the um, the table for the pins. But if you notice, the first two are reserved. We, th those aren't carried through to the 10 pin, and the last two aren't carried through for the 10 pin. But if you look at these connections, I oh, can't easily select them on there. The inner connections. If you look at that pin out. That is very similar. To these in KiCad. I it goes three volt on one side. Uh, SWDIO, then two grounds, and you've got SW clock and SWO. Yeah. And then miss two, and then you've got ground and reset. So if you go through these, it's exactly what you see on here. Three volt free or VCC. SWIO ground. SW clock ground. SWO. These two are then messed out. And it does ground detect and JNRST. So the wiring looks right from a um, from a connector point of view, although my pin numbering is entirely different. I'm wondering if I've somehow managed to flip this. Oh my golly. Let's have a look. Oh, this is so annoying. This is very annoying. Let's have a look at the connector. So if we look at this view here, these are the pins um, we've got SWIO 3 volt free, SW clock ground, SWO ground, not used two pins, and then SR the reset and then ground here. But that's a right angle. So that goes round like that. So these pins are the lower pins on the connector, and these are the upper row pins. Lower row, upper row, as exposed by the right angled connector. And it is a polarised connector, but I have assumed I've got it around the right way. I just wonder if maybe... I mean, these go to the right pins. These are right signals. Which I don't think there's an issue there. Unless there's a short on one of them. Possibly.
which is possible. I thought I got rid of all the shorts on here. Um, SWIO is there. SW clocks there. Those are the important two. I could have a look at the board, see if I can see any shorts on there. I mean, if it was connected to this. You know, if it was shorted to this pin, what's WS connected to? It's not connected to anything because that's connected to ESP32 for in theory. And is given that that's not actually installed. shouldn't be a problem. And then the other one is this one, SWTIO. That's just decoupled. So that will be high free volt free or something if it was shorted to that that could mess with it. Um, or the USB. Mm. So I mean, yeah, those could be shorts, or this could be messed up. Um. Golly. Good golly, Miss Molly. I don't know where to start on this one. Um, I don't think I have that old schematic to Bear it to damn roadblock. Let me commit these changes whilst I remember. Hmm. Do I lose my history here? Maybe I did. I 
And I just want to do um, that, right? Um, is that because I've got it HTTPS rather than, oh shit, rather than get bollocks, I'll have to change it, she's my French, good job this isn't a child friendly stream, right, um, I think I'm probably going to call it for this evening, annoyingly, um, because I've either got a hardware problem uh, with the connector or there's a short on the board. And it's annoying that I can't push back uh, I could have a quick look at the board I suppose see if I can eliminate that hmm. let's have a look just disconnect this One of the things I need to do is, is design a tool that's good for separating these ports. It's a bit of a pain taking them apart, quite frankly. And there's three layers it's more difficult to remove because um, you have to be careful not to remove the tiles off the bottom. Let's have a quick look. So the pin I want to look at is the SWDIO which is the third pin in one two fourth pin in on the top hold on let's have a look under the magnification first see if there's anything obvious I was pretty careful but there were a lot of um, shorts to begin with I was just testing for any heat, by the way. Tell you what would help is I could actually see through this magnifying glass, that would be nice. I have to look under the microscope. Let's 
So top four pin down. Hmm, looks clean to me. Nothing obvious. What about the clock? So that's the top pin on here. seeing things now, wanting to see things. I can't can't see a short, that's for sure. It all looks good. I cannot see anything wrong. Um, I mean, I'm assuming the STM32 isn't fried, of course. That's been through a few heat cycles. We will just get rid of bridges and stuff. They tend to be robust enough for that. Um, so nothing obvious upon inspection. Do a quick um, search. Oh, Twinkle, hello. Are you back? You come to help me debug my new board construction? No? That's a shame. I could do with some help. Do we go through? Hmm. Right. I'm just looking at um, pinouts. Standard pinouts. J tag. <sighs> Comparing that to how mine looks. I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not. Well, 
if I look at it from the point of view of the J taper now, it looks flipped. I wonder. So to get it round this way. It looks like the rows and columns are flipped. No, what am I talking about? I think the rows are flipped. Um, hmm. Could I have flipped the rows? That would be bad. Don't explain why it can't talk to it. Um, and I can't easily flip it on the connector. If that's the case, that's a really dim-witted thing to do. Extraordinarily dim-witted, I'd say. How would I flip the rows? I've already soldered in the connector as well, of course. Um, one way would be to solder it on the other side of the board, but given it's already soldered in, I can't easily change that. I wonder, would that, would that work? I need to somehow test to see that goes in that way. Pre vault prey ground grounds. Right. No, wait a minute. Hold on. It's not as simple as that. Those appear to be in the right place. Looking at that, it looks like the columns are flipped, not the rows. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the standard JTAG pinout. Standard arm JTAG pinout. compared to what I have here. And actually in that case, the columns are flipped, not the rows. Damn 
I wish I hadn't soldered it in before I tried it. Then I could have tried flipping it and stuff. Like I did with the other board. Oh! And I don't have... I don't think I have any converters that go from 1.27 to uh, normal headers so that I could do jumpers or something. Damn! And how would I flip it columnar wise? I guess I'd just solder it in from the underside. That would work. I wonder. Now, how would I test that? There's no easy way of doing that right now. Times like this, you need like a little patch. 1.27 mil patch cable. I might be able to make one up over the weekend or something, perhaps. I think that's what I've got to do. I'm fairly sure that I've muffed it and got the JTAG order wrong. That's what you get for manually making your own connector rather than use, reusing the existing one. Damn! That's annoying. Oh dearie, 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 dearie. Oh, I can twinkle again. Right, I think I'm going to call it quits because it's been a long, long day. Um, I'll have to have a look at this and I'll let you know. I might do another stream if I get, if I solve the problem. Okay, let's call it an evening. Sadness, I'm afraid. We only got so far. We know it's generally working, but we're stumped at the next stop. Right, okay, thanks folks. Um, I'll let you know what happens down on Discord and I'll tell you if I'm gonna stream again before Wednesday. Um, but thanks for your patience in the interim and uh, I'll leave a speech to you down on Discord or on the next stream. Ciao.